One of the most expensive things to have to replace on a truck project is the engine. And sometimes it's just a few details that keep it running and you can keep this from happening. Now we showed you a few things on how to make sure that your engine and drivetrain was in good shape before you even buy the project. But now we're gonna dabble a little deeper into some super simple engine maintenance and how to keep your truck on the road for a long time. So our truck has no major engine overhaul projects to do on it, just a little bit of maintenance. It's got more than 125,000 miles on it, and it looks like it. So we're just going to do a few upgrades, just do some stuff that takes care of an aging engine, and we're going to bring this engine bay back to life and make it look brand new again. All of this stuff starts with taking this hood off because it's a big dark hole and I can't see. If you work by yourself a lot like me, here's some tips for taking a hood off without damaging anything. First, put some soft cloths or shop towels under the rear corners of the hood. Next, you wanna use fender covers or blankets on the fenders. I've got an adjustable prop rod, but a homemade one is fine too. I'm marking the hinges with masking tape. That way I know where the hood goes when I put it back on and I can fine tune the adjustment from there. With the hinge bolts removed, Gently ease the hood down until it rests on the front of the radiator support. It helps if you have a buddy, but this can be done by yourself. The only real projects we've got under the hood are changing to a high mileage oil, changing the plugs and the ignition wires because it's the wrong set. Other than that, we're gonna pull a bunch of stuff off, clean it and then paint it and put it back together again, maybe replace some stuff if it's brittle and broken. And speaking of that, I went online to lmctruck.com, got this Chilton's manual, which is a great resource for how everything is laid out from the factory. And also found a set of chrome valve covers that we're gonna put on here too. Get a little bit of bling, make it look good. First things first, we're gonna power wash the whole engine compartment. Bagging your distributor and electronics will make sure you can start back up and drive after you clean. I'm using a parts store engine cleaner and letting it sit for a couple of minutes before pressure washing. Compressed air helps get rid of any standing water, or just leaving it overnight usually lets it all dry out enough. We know this engine runs good, but there's two tests that I want to do since we've got a little bit of access, we've got everything broken down. Uh, I'm going to do a pressure test on the cooling system, and that will tell me if the radiator tanks are solid and if the water pump is weeping or any of the coolant lines are leaking. And the compression test is going to tell us the condition of the combustion chambers of the engine. And that'll tell me, probably confirm what I already know, that it's a good running engine and it's worth just kind of freshening up. A pressure tester is not expensive to buy, but it can also be borrowed at an auto parts store, usually free with a deposit. It seals to the radiator cap port and you can pump up a precise amount of pressure, typically matching the pressure written on the radiator cap itself. Our cap had the 16 PSI rating stamped into it, but some don't. Most V8 radiators are 16 pounds, but your Chilton's manual should let you know what pressure yours should be. All right, we've got it set at about 16 PSI. I'm just watching the needle just to verify that it doesn't lose pressure. I don't hear any hissing. It's not losing pressure right now. So I'm now going to look for leaks since it's pressurized. I don't want to see leaks on the water pump. If your water pump is leaky, it's time to replace it before it totally fails. There's a weep hole at the bottom. You can always tell, even if it's not running out like a faucet. If you're getting moisture coming out of there, which I don't think I am. All right, so I'm gonna inspect the coolant lines. There's nothing in the reservoir. We're still holding pressure. The other thing I'm looking at is the tanks where they meet the radiator core. And everything looks bone dry, so we're gonna go with this radiator. Not hear any hissing, any dripping, any bubbling. We're good. Now we can do the compression test. A compression test is a really simple test and it will verify the internal health of the engine. Give us a pressure for each cylinder. 
pretty simple. The hose screws in where the spark plug goes and you turn the engine over and it gives you a reading. You're looking for even pressure across all cylinders and anything over 110 pounds is a good sign. Obviously, now is a good time to change out spark plugs as you go through this process. If you don't have a compression test kit, most auto parts stores have them in their Lona tool program, so you don't even have to buy one. I'm going to pull the main coil wire off so the truck doesn't start. <laughs> and now we can crank it over and see what the gauge tells us. Generally speaking, about 130, 135 pounds is excellent cylinder pressure. We've got just a little bit north of 135. We're going to call it 135 on number one. We'll go around and verify all the others, and I'm going to write them down as I go. With an average of 124 pounds across all eight cylinders, I'm really happy with that. And it verifies that the engine is worth building on. I've printed out a chart of the engine cylinder numbers and I'll record the pressure of each cylinder here for future reference. Pulling the radiator helps us get a look at it and gets it out of the way for painting and surface prep. We're just doing a simple water flush since I didn't see any corrosion at the hose outlets. Once I see good flow and clear water, then it's just a matter of pressure washing the fins and cleaning the rad and some of the other underhood parts with an engine cleaner. On the engine, I'm removing the accessory drive from the front, pulling apart some harnesses and the fuel lines. disconnecting and removing the throttle body for a good, thorough cleaning. Carburetor cleaner, backed up by a stiff bristle brush, works great on the throttle body and gets rid of carbon buildup and general debris on the inside and outside of all of the passages. After vacuuming up any leftover debris, we'll cover the ports of the intake and make sure nothing gets inside of this engine. A wire brush on a drill removes the scaly rust off of the dry bare steel parts and it preps them for the new coating that will protect them and stop the rusting process. Using a red scuffing pad, we'll scuff everything else that needs to be painted and freshened up. The inner fenders, firewall, radiator support and the intake manifold as well as all the parts we've removed for better access. Using automotive masking tape, I'm making sure paint doesn't get into the engine or important wiring as well as any plastic parts or anything I don't want overspray on. The frame rails and some of the steering components have light surface rust, but they're super clean from the pressure washing, so I'm using a POR15 paint which bonds to the rust and locks it in. The satin finish will look great once it's dry. The first color I'm spraying is a close match to the original color of our truck and gets sprayed on the inner fenders and firewall. This color is quite translucent and will take several coats to build up the color. Next, I'm using an aluminum colored paint on the brake master cylinder and some of the fluid lines. Last, I'll paint the intake manifold, radiator support and inner fenders with three coats of Colorbond black underhood paint that we got from the LMC truck catalog. I haven't cleaned or masked the valve covers since they're getting replaced with new chrome ones. All right, spray painting 101, how to make a paint job look good with just a rattle can. So prep is king, like every other painting project. I've scuffed all of the parts with a red scuffing pad to give the necessary tooth for adhesion. 
Next, we've cleaned everything. I've got a wax and grease remover from my body shop supplies, but if you go to a home center or a tractor supply store, you can get naphtha and it works like a really good solvent-based pre-cleaner. So once you've got everything clean and everything prepped with the Scotch-Brite, I've also got 320 grit sandpaper. You can see spots like this right here that are feathered out. That was a chip. So 320 grit sandpaper. It's going to smooth that surface out to where you're not going to see that chip through the new paint. So we're using Color Bond semi-gloss under hood black. This is a really good rattle can paint. It's very versatile. It works very well with plastics as well as steel painted parts. So with everything prepped, now we're ready to spray. A lot of people make the mistake of just coloring with paint, making it black and then you think you're done. The same rules to a professional paint job apply to this guy as well as the rules of keeping yourself safe. So I'm gonna recommend safety glasses and even though it doesn't have a hardener, a good painting mask. You can see that this color is slightly translucent, so it's gonna require several coats. Maintain an even pattern and overlap each pass by half as you travel across the panel, which will allow your paint to dry even and be consistent. Allow each coat to dry until it's dry to touch. Then put on your next coat in the same controlled pattern. With three medium wet coats, these parts will look like the factory new parts and will have enough thickness and strength in the film to hold up for a long time. With all three colors sprayed and let dry for about an hour, we can unmask and get ready for the next upgrades. The chrome valve covers go on exactly like the originals, easy peasy. They come with new gaskets and it's a pretty good idea to replace them if yours are original or leaking. Our plug wires were way too long and resting on the exhaust. Ordering new wires specifically for your engine gets a set that's the correct length on every plug and it's easy to tell where they go. Just start with the longest one, the farthest away from the distributor cap, then go to the next longest one. Here's where your reference photos and notes will come in handy. Having a picture of the correct orientation and location of parts is a real time saver. The newly flushed radiator gets dropped in, transmission cooler lines attached, followed by the fan shroud and new radiator hoses installed. We ordered a new heat riser tube from the catalog, which was inexpensive, looks great, and helps startups in colder temperatures. Here's a tip. Drop a screwdriver in beside your funnel for smooth pouring and no glugging. We're using a 50-50 mix of antifreeze and deionized water. Our radiator cap was old and the gasket slightly torn, so we're installing a new one. Take a close look at your oil the first time you change it. Inspect it for debris in your drain pan or any signs of moisture, which will be milky looking or metallic and look like sparkles in the oil. Neither one is good, and either one will tell you that you might have serious problems with the engine. We're using a high mileage oil in a 10W40 grade, which stays thicker at higher temperatures. With everything reassembled, it's remarkable what a little cleanup, a few new parts, and some paint can do. All told, we spent a few days restoring under the hood, but it's not lipstick on a pig, and it gave me the chance to really get down and inspect everything under the hood. I'm really happy with this. It's all freshened up. It looks like a brand new truck under the hood. And on top of that, now we replaced the leaky valve cover gaskets, changed the oil, put on some chrome valve covers to lift the appearance under the hood. We painted everything, plugs, ignition wires, oil filter, and high mileage oil to set it up for another 100,000 miles worth of driving and flushed the radiator out. So uh, we've got it absolutely buttoned down under the hood. Now we can work our way towards the rest of the drivetrain, one bite at a time.